Hey, this is John Buck. Uh, this is the third video in our signal on spatial covariance matrices. Uh, if you haven't watched the first two episodes of this exciting series, I'd recommend you pause here, and go back and binge your way through the first two uh, before you pick up again here, because uh, we don't want any spoilers, mathematically speaking. Uh, and we're going to start by talking about unitary matrices. We say that a matrix phi is a unitary matrix. is a very special kind of matrix, which it, if, if that's true, it says that when I take phi Hermitian times phi, I get the identity matrix. And that implies uh, two important facts about that matrix. The first fact is that each column of phi is orthogonal to all the other columns. And the second fact is that each column is normalized so that if I say lowercase phi is just one as the vector that's just one column of the big phi I've pulled out, that each of those columns is normalized so their magnitude squared is one. So that's why on the diagonal, I get the identity matrix has all ones. Everywhere else it is zero. And there's a very important, beautiful, special and geometric interpretation of a unitary matrix, which is that a unitary matrix is the equivalent of just rotating the axes. But when I multiply something with a unitary matrix, I'm rotating the coordinate axes, but I'm not actually changing the shape or size or angle of anything in the, in the frame. I'm just sort of changing the way I compute my, my coordinates without actually physically changing the mathematic or mathematically changing the object in any important way. So that's a very important interpretation and we will use that idea with unitary matrices to help us understand what's going on with spatial covariance matrices once we once we start seeing things where the sensors are actually correlated. But first let's let's see how the, this looks uh, mathematically. Right, if V is a unitary matrix, then that's saying that I can, it, it's a, a complete orthonormal basis that says for any point in X, I can write it as some linear combination of the columns of phi. Right, so if I can write it as the col columns of phi, I, I can say that, that the vector X is some, uh, the, the matrix phi right multiplied by some X tilde that are the the weights I want to multiply, use, apply to each column of phi to get equal to x. And so I can interpret that uh, in my sort of 2D case, like we're thinking about with concentration ellipses. Right, I can interpret that by saying, well, that's, that's like saying that x is equal to the first column phi 1 times the first coordinate x tilde 1 plus the second column phi 2 times x2 tilde. Right, so in this case, uh, this is this is just unpacking this and saying I've got any point in the x-coordinate can be written as some weighted sum of these two orthogonal vectors, phi one and phi two. Well, that's just begging us to draw a picture. So let's draw that picture. So if I think about a point in two-dimensional space like this, I've got the x one x two axes. It's just sort of saying my Cartesian point x one x two. Those are the projections onto these two axes. But what I'm saying is when I multiply by a unitary matrix phi, it's like I'm introducing a new set of also orthogonal axes. We'd say this is the phi 1 and phi 2 axes. They would be the unit vectors in each of these directions. And so just the same way I can write this point in terms of its projection onto the x1, x2 axes, I can also project it onto the phi 1 and phi 2 axes. And that will give me these new coordinates x1 and x2 tilde. Those are like the coordinates in the rotated frame using the, the tilde to represent the rotated frame here. And so that's saying that I need to define these coordinates. What I need to do is take this point and project it onto the phi1 and phi2 frame. So to, so to do that, I would take phi transpose times the original x. And just to see how this has to work out, we can say, well, if I take the original phi, and we saw earlier, we said we're assuming the x tilde weights are the the coefficients I need to apply to the columns of phi to get x. So if I put this in for x, and then very quickly see, here's my unitary matrix. Right? Property of the unitary matrix is its inner product with itself as the identity. So what that leaves me here is x tilde. Right? So we have a uh, Uh, we, we've shown that by doing this projection, multiplying by the transpose in the real case, for this simple two-dimensional case, for us it will be uh, Hermitian for the larger n-dimensional case. 
on any matrix is rotating the coordinate axes and finding the same point what its coordinates will be on these new rotated axes described by the columns of phi. So how does this help us when we have uh, correlated spatial covariance matrices? Well, the key to that is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Any Hermitian matrix can be written or factored where S is equal to phi times some matrix capital lambda times phi Hermitian, where as, as you would expect, the phi matrices, these are unitary, this is a unitary matrix. And then this lambda matrix is actually a diagonal matrix with coordinates, uh, let's see, to stay with what we had earlier, we'll have sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, up to uh, n. We'll have n, and these are called the eigenvalues. And, and you've probably seen this before in linear algebra or maybe another class, uh, sometimes depending on who's uh, in some versions of the random signals class, we talk about this. So you might want to review this if you're not familiar with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, they're the solution to an equation Right? We could say if, if phi is an eigenvector of this, what it's saying is that the, uh, the corresponding, uh, if, if I take S and multiply it by the vector phi sub L, it's the same thing as getting back, uh, in this case we'll call it sigma L squared, times the same matrix. So it's this idea that I multiply phi by the matrix, I still get the same vector, just scale by a constant which in our case, for a Hermitian matrix like this, that's a covariance matrix, the eigenvalues are always going to be the powers on these different dimensions. It's also important, another important thing, if this is a, for a covariance matrix, because these represent powers, we have uh, all the sigma, sigma squares must be non-negative. Right, we always have non-negative powers. Well, let's see, this, th knowing these eigenvectors give us an important tool because we say if, in general, we, we've seen how to make concentration ellipses and think about what's going on when the different sensors are uncorrelated, but we don't know what to do if they are correlated. And what we're about to find, as it turns out, eigenvectors are the rotational coordinate system, the coordinate system we want to rotate, rather, to make the new problem uncorrelated. Right, so if I define a new rotated coordinate system. Going back to my original n dimension, for my original n dimensional case here, we say, well, for the, we'd take the complex eigenvectors and just project x onto those, right? This is not changing anything, it's just rotating the coordinates. But we know that when I multiply this in general, what's that going to do to the covariance matrix? Well, this tells us, we know from the earlier video, that the, the covariance matrix of, S, of x tilde will be the same matrix times the covariance matrix, the original covariance matrix, times the Hermitian of this thing we multiplied by, which is just back to phi. So I can plug this in and say that in the new coordinate system, I'll have phi Hermit, the covariance matrix in the new coordinate system. And now I'm going to write S using the eigen decomposition. Right, so I'm plugging this all, this is what I just plugged in for S here. And now look what I have. Beautiful, two identity matrices because we know phi are Hermitian. So that tells me that if I use a change of coordinates that are the eigenvectors and apply that to my variables, this is just rotating the axes, but in these new axes, when I use the eigenvectors, I'm guaranteed to have an uncorrelated problem, that this will always be a diagonal matrix, meaning in this new coordinate system, each possible pair of coordinates are uncorrelated with each other, and I'm back to having the nice ellipse example I saw earlier. So it says, for any correlated noise, there is some way to rotate the axes to make it an uncorrelated problem, which is much easier to think about. And in fact, we'll see in class, there's even a way to do it to make it white which is great because now we know the answers to a lot of problems if we're working with white noise. But let's see an example of how this, we'll finish by showing a concentration example in, in 2D for the ellipse, uh, for the, the 2D case and, and finish up with that. All right, so let's see what happens if, if I uh, work that through and work through an example here. So 
we're going to sketch the concentration ellipse for a covariance matrix where S is equal to, to again, a 2D simple case we can sketch just to get a feeling for what's going on. 6.1, 6.3, 6.3, and 22.9. The first thing we want are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, and we can use MATLAB to do that or, or your other favorite way of other uh, tool for calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's uh, uh, pause for a moment, go do that in MATLAB and check your answers against mine. So when I've found the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it turns out the eigenvectors are this matrix here, minus 0 0.95, 0 0.31, 0 0.31, 0 0.95, which is the same as 1 over root 10 times minus 3, 1, 1, 3. Uh, and the eigenvalues associated with it is 4 and 25. So this is saying that my first, in this rotated coordinate system where things will be uncorrelated, my powers will be 4 and 25. Right, so another important property I, I would mention from eigenvalues, um, are from eigenvalues and eigenvectors, is we can also quickly find the inverse of a matrix. That if, if we have, uh, which I should spell it out more carefully, if S is equal to phi times lambda times phi Hermitian, we can quickly show that S inverse will have the same eigenvectors, but just the inverse of the inner matrix, which sort of makes sense. It's saying in this rotated coordinate system, these matrices are diagonals, and I know when I have a diagonal matrix, I just invert each element on the diagonal. So to figure out how to make this, co this uh, concentration ellipse, what we're going to do is we're going to define our new coordinate system, x tilde, will be equal to phi uh, transpose, in this case, since they're real, times the original x. So I'll be taking it and saying I've got 1 over root 10 times minus 3. And actually, I'm going to do this in color just to help find them. So I'll say I'm going to call phi 1, this first column I'm going to write in blue. The second column I'll write in red. All right, so those are the two things I'm projecting onto with x. Right, in fact, maybe I'll, I'll fix that up here just to remind us. To, I'm going to use the color to make the coordinate system clear. So now that I've, that I've fixed this, we're saying I've, I've got this new coordinate system, x tilde. It's just multiplying by a unitary matrix. So all I've done is rotate the axes. I haven't actually changed anything, just spun the axes around. But when I've done that, we're going to see that what, what I end up with in that new system of reference, in, that new, in, in those new axes, when we find the covariance matrix for x tilde, that that would be phi transpose times the original sx times phi. And because of the properties, we'll just be left with the original lambda x. Right, so this will be a diagonal matrix that's 4, 0, 25. And so if I want to go make a concentration ellipse, it's very easy to show that the uh, inverse of x tilde Right, so the inverse of this matrix would just be 1 quarter, 0, 0, 1 over 25. And we're back to a very simple quadratic form like we saw in the previous video. Right, that, So for, if I want a quadratic form where x tilde transpose, the vector, times the inverse of the covariance matrix times x tilde equal to a, some constant alpha, this is just going to be, when I put the quarters in and go through the same thing I did in the previous video, I'll have the first element of x1 tilde squared over 4 plus the second element of x1 tilde squared over 25. And so to find these, these are going to be on these two different axes. So let me make a sketch of them. So starting in my x1, x2 coordinates, we know things were, were originally coordinated. And now I'm going to put my v1 and v2 coordinate axes on it, which are just those i, or sorry, phi1 and phi2, which are my eigenvectors, color coded with phi1 is blue, phi2 is red. So let me add those carefully. So there's my rotated coordinate frame, right? I've got this is the minus 3, 1 vector, anything on as collinear minus 3, 1. And this is 1, 3, the, the orthogonal vector to it. And so I, what I'm saying is I've, I've basically, rot when I rotate to this coordinate frame, the ellipses, will be the ones I just had there, and they will be uncorrelated. In this new frame, things are uncorrelated, which is to say the axes of the ellipse at 
line up with the phi1, phi2 axes. So we now have our equation in that rotated frame for our ellipse. We're saying you know, that I'll have something that is basically uh, the, on the x1 axis, which is the phi1 part, I would have something that's roughly 2. So plus or minus 2 would be when x2 tilde is 0. So I'm on this axis, I get plus or minus 2. On the other axis, I get plus or minus 5. So maybe something about like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, rotated over here. So my ellipse, my concentration ellipse like this, Right, is saying because it's not lined up on the x1, 2, it's not lined up on the x1, x2 axes, well, that's not a very good ellipse. But it's long and thin, so this is saying there's much more power on the phi2 axis than, than the phi1, but in this coordinate frame, they're un, uncorrelated. And that's a helpful coordinate frame because it's much easier to solve statistical signal processing when the dimensions are uncorrelated. But in the original, like if x1 and x2 were the actual sensor space, they looked correlated. So it's very helpful to find this axis, or we'll see with later when we get to other algorithms, it's very useful to interpret what those algorithms are doing by thinking about these ideas of unitary matrices and when I'm uh, rotating things and when I'm rescaling things. Okay, so we'll stop here. Plenty in this video, uh, but some very important tools for thinking about higher dimensional random processes by sort of having these two-dimensional cartoons in our head of what we're doing with different operations. All right, so that's all for now. I'll see you next time.